KC's Audio Vault. Andrew Seward of Against Me. September 10th, 2010. Hello. Hello, Andrew. How's it going? I'm good. Casey in Winnipeg. How are you? Uh, very, very good. Do you uh, enjoying the Canadian date so far? Oh, absolutely. We're only, on a, we're only on the third show, but I'm not just saying this because you're Canadian, but I always have a great time in Canada. I swear to God, I'm not being a politician or anything. I honestly have a good time in Canada. You didn't get hassled at the border then? No, no, not at all. What's really funny, and I don't want this to bite us in, in the ass, but uh, it's actually becoming harder to cross back into America now than it is to get into Canada. They didn't even, like our, our tour manager, Jordan, just had our passports. We crossed Niagara, I think the Rainbow Bridge maybe, at like 2.30 at night, and we didn't even have to get out. He just gave him the passwords like, yeah, you're good. Wow. So thank you. Thank you, Niagara, Niagara Customs and Border Guards. What up? And what, what do the, uh, the American border police do when you try and cross back home? Well, there, there's a time. Um, I believe it's the one, I think it's Montana, or it was North Dakota we tried crossing in one time. Uh, let's see, North Dakota, that would be uh, Saskatchewan. And then Montana would be Alberta, right? Yeah, somewhere around there. Well, we've got uh, just below Manitoba is also North Dakota. So was, there's Emerson is the the one uh, border crossing. I think that was the one. And I remember, I guess we had just played Regina or Saskatoon. And we were coming down. And they were just dicks. Like all of us like had to piss and stuff like that. And they're like, no, you have to stay in this room. Like going through all their bags, you know. Someone had like a, you know... Advil bottle and they're popping it open just being like we're keeping this like what it's Advil (laughs) so I mean we didn't want to do the you know they kind of get mad when you you're like you know we actually you know have to pay taxes by requirement I mean not not we don't have to but you know you want to give that speech but it's it's probably best in in that situation facing down a someone in authority just to uh, kind of be polite and let them do what they think is necessary yeah, I mean, that's why we were nothing but polite, but, you know, you know, it's not a Canadian, American, or anything. It's an international thing. People of authority, if they want to abuse it, they're going to abuse it, and you're going to be at the receiving end, so. I saw that, uh, that well, Tom was tweeting about being in first class uh, last week and leaving the rest of you guys in coach. How was that flight? Oh, no, that was fine. That was just, uh, he was just being funny. I mean, he literally was up there, but, uh, no, that was like a, what was it, a short flight from Charlotte, North Carolina to Buffalo, where we met up to cross the border. Oh, no, no, that was, U.S. Air is cheap. It's like if there's an excess baggage fee or something like that that you have to pay anyways because we have too many guitars when we fly with, but if you pay like 40 extra dollars, you uh, get bumped to first class, and then you get all the free drinks. So you have to just do the calculation in your mind. <laughs> like how, much, how much am I going to drink? And definitely $40 worth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you just... Just wine, beer, wine, whiskey, wine. No, uh, but you know, I, shoot, I don't care. I got, I got no problem with a, a friend wanting to calculate the drinks and everything like that. I'm fine. I just sit there and fall asleep. So, are you doing most of the tour by bus? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're doing it all. I mean, after this, we go down. Uh, see, I think the last show is in Calgary, and then we go down into Montana, play a show, basically down to Los Angeles, and then we fly over to New Zealand, Australia, and Japan. That will be by plane, of course. Yes. A very long boat ride. <laughs> you guys have video games, comic books? What do you do to pass the time in the bus? I probably say I'm definitely the biggest nerd in the band. I mean, shit, man, I, I waste a lot of hours. I'll, I'll, I'll show my nerd card. It's no problem. I've, I've beaten, like, StarCraft two on the computer, and uh, James and I have actually been playing a lot of FIFA, been playing a lot of soccer on the bus. Uh, you know, everything, we're just normal guys, you know, a lot of us read, just do normal shit to pass the time. I mean, we always make a point, whatever city we're in, to walk around and try to find some local grub and, you know, see the local sites. So we, we're, we're still, we're mini tourists when we can. And you're still, well, working extremely hard. It seems like, to me, the bands with the punk roots are the ones that can't really seem to slow down. Are you Are you able to unplug from music and do other stuff? Mm. No, not really. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I just think it's all. Everything's so involved. Everything's so uh, kind of like 360. You know, this is just. This is what we do. It's what we've done forever. And I, I honestly think we have no idea what else we would do. 
Well, that's good. That's a sign that you're doing what you need to be doing. Yeah, and, and also, I, I don't want to do anything else. This is amazing. Do you think the, the writing, recording, touring cycle just will keep going for, for years and years, or do you plan to pause for family or other stuff anytime? Uh, I hope so. I mean, I, mean, I, ho- I hope it keeps going, but, you know, there, there's, there's always factors, you know, that come into play, um, but we, we deal with them very gracefully, I would say. You know, we have, you know, we'll have our families come out and visit us, and Papa was a Rolling Stone, and uh, I don't know. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is the, the only other option to, you know, not do this and get a job where we just sit around somewhere, it, we're just too far gone. It doesn't appeal to us anymore. Right. Or actually, actually, it never appealed. So, you know. <laughs> Do, is there any new babies on the way? Uh, no, unless somebody, unless someone's keeping a secret. No, but uh, no, I just I had a baby uh, ten weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, and she's she came very early, so I had to leave tour and go fly straight home. But we had a friend fill in on base, and he took a red eye from Portland, Oregon, to Philadelphia, and band didn't miss one show. I missed the band, but the band didn't miss a show. Well, so you you're able to see see the new baby and then uh, make it back to work? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I take advantage of modern technology and do the, the eye chat and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we were home for a week. Uh, like our last show before Montreal was in uh, Leeds, England. So we went over there, did that, and then we were home for a week, then we flew up for this. And, you know, everything, we, we take what we can get, you know, after Japan, we have four days at home before we go back to Europe for a month. But uh, when you're home, you just you soak it up as much as you can, you know. Do you have the, the new iPhone? Can you do the, the FaceTime thing? I do not have that because I fear that my cell phone bill would be ridiculously high. <laughs> but if you want to talk tech, those new iPod Touches are coming out that have FaceTime. So I will probably be investing in one of those. Nice. No what? contracts. Did you see Guns N' Roses recently? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I saw them, uh, you know, it was the Reading and Leeds Festival, and I was actually hanging out with um, Billy Talent's crew, who are all super nice guys. The, the band went, went to London that night, uh, but I stayed around their, their backstage room and drank their beer and watched Guns N' Roses from the, not the side of the stage, because, you know, they won't let anybody on the stage. It's, it's locked down. But uh, while I was watching, it was the best show I've ever seen, ever, because... It was so terribly bad. It was it was like watching a great, like it was like watching Talladega Nights or Step Brothers, something like that. It was amazing. <laughs> it was it was awkwardly awesome. Oh, amazing! the The guitar player, his name's DJ something. I don't I don't know. Yeah. He he had a top hat, a gold top Les Paul, and was smoking a cigarette. I mean, he it's like Axel dressed him as Slash. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Tommy Stinson's still still with them, right? Oh yeah, Tommy. I mean, huge replacement fan. So it, it was awesome seeing Tommy Stinson, but you know, I knew they weren't going to play any replacement songs. So that's true. You know. and, well, the best thing is they came on an hour late, and there was a real strict thing with the curfew and the promoter. The like big thing, you know how British uh, music magazines they just sensationalize the hell out of everything. So there's already this hoopla, like are are they going to show up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they showed up, but they came on an hour late, and they opened up a Chinese democracy and then went into a, another ballot off Chinese democracy. You're like, Boo-hoo-hoo. and the crowd was so passive. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> well, when we uh, saw them in, in Winnipeg, it was actually Tommy Stinson that was sort of being like a prima donna because someone threw a bottle, and he just went off. He said, this is it. If you throw one more bottle, I'm out of here. And I was expecting to hear that from Axel, but not a guy from the replacements. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, Mr. Simpson. I love his bass playing, and I love his style of dress, but I don't know. I mean, you, I, sometimes I wonder. I wonder if Axel, like, coaches them to be dicks. <laughs> so he doesn't seem like such a big dick in comparison? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he, everything that they do, I guarantee you, is planned. You know, like showing up an hour late, throwing a tantrum when they get their set cut. It's all, it's all, I think it's all image. But then again, what do I know? Well, I appreciate you giving us a call against me playing the Garrick on Thursday. The NFL season just started. Are you an NFL guy? Uh, no, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm a sports guy. I guess I'm all around. I'm way too much of a dude. Yeah. 
So you're a geek, but you still uh, watch the sports? Yeah, I, I pretty much I dabble in everything. So are you uh, a Miami Dolphins fan or what? Absolutely not. Tennessee Titans. All right. Champs this year. This year? That's your prediction? Chris Johnson, best running back. Andrew, thank you so much for uh, calling into the Power Drive. Looking forward to the show on Thursday. All right, Winnipeg. See you soon. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.